right, I want to get into some scriptures, and I trust that Melissa will have them on the bottom of the screen so that you can follow along there, or what's always better is if you have the Bible open in front of you. But uh, we're not going to go through 25, 26, 30, 33 uh, passages of scripture, but uh, I'm going to go take you with me to five or six, and there's nothing particularly special uh, I haven't taken these because uh, I'm trying to proof text. I just don't want to go through 25 or 26 or 30 uh, or more passages of Scripture. Uh, but the ones that I'm going to show you uh, are representative of the rest and um, should help you to understand what I'm saying about this passage in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 20, where it's recorded, Trophimus, Quoting Paul, Trophimus, I left in Miletus sick. In 2 Corinthians 13, verse 9. 2 Corinthians 13, verse 9 says this. For we rejoice when we ourselves are weak. That same word that's translated sick in most Bibles in 2 Timothy 4.20. Weak. For we rejoice when we ourselves are weak, but you are strong. This we also pray for, that you be made complete. Then in Romans chapter 8, verse 3. Romans 8, verse 3. For what the law could not do, weak. Paul's not saying what the law could not do because it was sick. What the law could not do, weak as it was through the flesh, God did, sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and as an offering for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. I hope that's pretty easy to understand for what the law could not do, weak as it was, not sick as it was, as weak. Then uh, back to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, uh, verse 22, listen to this. Same Greek word, to the weak and... and uh, that's not the verb, that's a sthenesic word that's a noun there, or, or excuse me, an adjective. Uh, to the weak, I became weak. Now, surely you know the Apostle Paul is not saying, to the sick, I became sick. He says, to the weak, I became weak, that I might win, not the sick, but that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men, so that I may by all means save some. Let me illustrate out of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 30. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 30. For this reason, many among you are asthene. Many of you, many among you are weak and sick. And a number sleep. Now, this is in the context of, of communion and uh, coming around the table worthily in a worthy manner, not worthy because no one is worthy. And when he says, for this reason, uh, many among you are weak, asthene, and then he uses a, another word, our hortes, our, and there it's in the plural, toy, uh, and a number sleep. He's talking about uh, dead. So a number of you are weak and sick and some have died. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 14 we urge you brethren admonish the unruly encourage the faint hearted help the weak asthenes help the weak that word that is used in all of these in 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 20 be patient with everyone he's not saying help the sick although when people are sick and if we can help them we need to help them and then he finishes up though but uh, be patient with everyone so my point is and hopefully you've gotten it that um, the word that so many translate as sick in 2 Thessalonians, excuse me, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 20. Uh, the word that is translated sick can be and is more often translated 
weak and weak in the sense of exhausted. Sometimes it's morally weak even. Um, but the word is weak and the word is sick. So which should it be? Why, why do all these translations have it uh, as sick? Why do so many like Dr. MacArthur, like Dr. Brown, like Dr. White, why are they also set on Paul having left Trophimus in Miletus sick? The translators, translating committees in, in many of the cases, uh, are in that same camp. When you've got a when when one Greek word, let me take just a second, and hopefully you'll understand this. And um, if you don't understand it, I'm not blaming it on you. I'm blaming it on my inability to communicate uh, as clearly as I would would like. When a Greek word can be translated properly two different ways, then. How do the translators or the translating committees, how do they decide on which way to translate it? And using this as an illustration, should we translate it exhausted here? He was just weak from their traveling. Or should we translate it sick? Because it can be translated either way. Well, the context places some demands. But also, the theology of uh, the translator or translating committee, those making up the committee translating, uh, their theology comes into to play. So you can understand that if they don't believe that God's healing or wanting to heal all the time, then they're going to translate that as sick. Or maybe it even makes sense to them. What makes most sense? Without really thinking it through. Um, Paul, you may remember, uh, going on to another subject, uh, Paul wrote Corinthians. By the Spirit of God, he penned these words, and most everyone that I'm familiar with, most of the pastors, preachers, teachers, uh, Bible teachers, and uh, uh, students of God's Word, uh, call 1 Corinthians 13 the love chapter. Well, the love chapter is sandwiched in here in Paul's first letter to the Corinthian church. And it's called the love chapter because Paul talks about love. Let me, I'm not going to read the whole chapter, but let me just start off here. He says, if I speak uh, with the tongues of men and of angels but do not have love, I've become a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and know all mysteries, and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. Well, down in verse 4, and that was the end of verse 2, in verse two, 4, he starts talking about uh, love is patient, uh, love is kind, love is not jealous, uh, and etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Like I said, I don't want to read the whole chapter. Now, why do I bring that up? Paul was a man of love. Now, if he's a man of love, now, now, again, I'm hoping that I'm clear on this. Here, Trophimus is on his evangelistic team. Uh, Trophimus is traveling with the Apostle Paul. Now, get this picture. Trophimus gets sick in Miletus, and Paul says, well, sorry, I've got to go on. I've got things to do. And he did have things to do. And if we had some evidence that God said, I know that your brother here is sick, but I want you to go on, that would be another thing. But Paul was a man of love. He didn't just write about love. He was a man of love. He wrote from his heart. He wrote by the power of the Holy Spirit, the guidance. He was born along by the Spirit of God in what he wrote. To be a man of God, to be a man of love, and have someone that's traveling with you, ministering to you, helping you, who gets sick, and then you just say, well, I'm sorry, you'll have to stay here till you get well, and I'll, I'll be seeing you. I don't believe that. I think I, I know Paul from his writings a little bit better than that. If Trophimus got sick, 
he would have stayed there with him. If he couldn't heal him, if, if God wasn't present, if the healing power of God wasn't present with Paul for his healing, at, at the very least he would have stayed there or we would have had some record where Paul uh, got a family or some people to minister, but God's word doesn't tell us that. That would be eisegesis. That would be eisegetical, reading into the scriptures something that's not there. What is more likely? They had been traveling. Trophimus becomes exhausted. He needs some rest. So Paul says, son, go ahead. You stay here. You get some rest, and I'm going to go on. You can catch up with me later. Or I'll meet you in such and such a place. And, and again, I know that's not in the scripture. But I'm telling you about the heart of the Apostle Paul. It's not he's sick. It's he's exhausted. Trophimus, I have left in Miletus, exhausted. Um, in Ezekiel 34, 16, we read, I will seek the lost, bring back the scattered, uh, bind up the broken, and strengthen the sick. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with judgment. That's the word of God. I will strengthen the sick. Listen, he was a Holy Spirit-filled man. He would stay there to minister to Trophimus if Trophimus was sick. It's not just, I'm going to leave you there. I mean, even the good Samaritan didn't do that. He took some care and expressed and showed love. In Matthew chapter 8, excuse me, Matthew chapter 12, verse 8, we have this written by the Spirit of God through Matthew. It's quoting Jesus. In sending out the twelve, he says, Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. Freely you have received, and freely give. Now that's what he said to the apostles. That's what he said to the twelve. Paul is an apostle. He didn't change his word to the apostle Paul. So what would the word be to the apostle Paul? Heal the sick. Heal the sick. Not leave them there because they're sick. You've got other things to do. Heal the sick. <coughs> Excuse me. In Luke chapter 10, verse 9, when Jesus was sending out the 70, he was sending them out to heal those who were in the towns that they'd be going to before he got there, uh, who are sick and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. Listen to this. Jesus' words in Matthew 25, beginning at verse 35. Jesus said, for I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you took off and left me. No, no, that's not what he says. He said, I was sick, and you visited me. And then he finishes up. Verse 36, I was in prison and you came to me. I was sick and you visited me. What do, these, what do these translators have? What do some of these preachers from the last several hundred years right up to today have this saying? Uh, you were sick, so I left you there because I needed to go on. I had things to do. Well, I'd like for us to go to another two or three passages, but let's take another break here for just a few moments, and uh, we'll pick up in Acts chapter 14. Please stay with me in this study. <laughs> 